Welcome, everyone, to another edition of Drunk Agile. With us, as always, in her style and new jacket is Nisha. Um, not the best pose for her, but hey, uh, Nisha, you're on camera. <laughs> With Nisha, unfortunately, unfortunately, you get Nisha, you get the other guy, and the other guy is Pratik Singh. Hi, Pratik. My name is Daniel Vacanti. Thank you so much for joining us, Pratik. What are you drinking? We were, we were practicing how to show this earlier. This is the only pre-game we do. Yeah, there we go. That's a uh, Glenn Grant, Glenn Levitt, thirteen-year-old Sherry Cask, sixty-one uh, percent. Uh oh, um, it's getting up there. Games. Yeah. So yeah, I just this this will just be a one drink. Show, um, I hope. Yeah. So this is <laughs> this is a a banner night for me. I'm finally getting into a, a bottle I've been wanting to open, and I I just opened it right right before the show here. Um, another Blair Athel, but it's a, a bourbon cask, 59.8%, 12 years old. Um, one of, one, of, one of the best ones I've had in a while, actually. Pretty good. This, this is. So uh, cheers, everybody. Slange. Cheers, folks. The question tonight um, is one, one, that we, one that we've had, Pratik and I have had uh, several times in the past month or, or so. Yeah. And we've kind of covered it in previous episodes, but kind of haven't. Uh, so we'll spend a little bit more time um, tonight talking through the um, uh, subtleties and nuances of it. And the question is, a team is working on a bunch of stuff and a brand new feature shows up. Feature, epic, whatever you want to call it, shows up. It's like, here you go. And the product owner or customer wants to know, hey, when will this feature be done? Right, they, the team hasn't started it. The product owners just showed up with this epic of this feature. Say, I want, I want you, I want all of you to work on this. When will this particular feature be done? Critique. Let's talk about how we might answer that. It's maybe not as straightforward as as people might think. Yeah, um, the regular watchers slash listeners uh, of the podcast would would probably know how we would start going about this, which you know we throw this into the magic eight ball of Monte Carlo and run a bunch of Monte Carlo simulations and say 20 things, whatever, I've got 85% chance of getting this done in 30 days or less, whatever that is. The Monte Carlo will give us an answer. That is probably where we'll start <laughs> or probably where most people will start. But as Dan, as you said, there are multiple things to consider. It unfortunately is not that simple. So let's talk about it. So, um, I'll, I'll ask a generic question first and then maybe a little bit more specific question. Um, so why, why, why can't we just say, put 20 into our Monte Carlo simulation and take the date that it gives us. I mean, what is there? Is there something? Is there something specifically wrong with that? What? Why? Why, why can't I just do that? I'm trying to count in my head of how many things are wrong with that. <laughs> okay. But <laughs> I, my quick rough count comes up at about four, but there's probably more. Um, the, the the there are there, there are a bunch of things. There are a bunch. Every time we do that, they were making a bunch of assumptions. Um. The one, the most obvious thing that is wrong with that is my guess is your team right now is not just sitting around waiting for a feature to show up. They're probably actively working on things. The way Monte Carlo works is it tells you this is the number of things you can get done by this date. Or um, if you want to get X number of things done, this is a good date that, that you can tell people. So if you want to get 20 things done, December 25th is a great date, whatever. Um, it doesn't tell you what those 20 things are. And my guess is the things that your team is working on right now are probably going to be the things that will get done first before you pull this new feature in. So that 20 is loaded with the things you're working on right now. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, that's, that's a, a point I think that, that bears repeating because I, I, people kind of need to understand this. 
when you run a Monte Carlo simulation, if you if you try doing a Monte Carlo win and you put 20 in, it as Pratik just said, it is just telling you when the next 20 will be done. The next 20. If you have say 11 things in progress already, and you run the Monte Carlo simulation for 20, chances are most of those 20 things will be those things that you're already working on in progress. Um, that's uh, I'm I'm not sure how many people pick up on that kind of kind of nuance when um, when you start working with Monte Carlo simulation, but that's all Monte uh, that's all Monte Carlo is telling you is uh, when will when will the next twenty things be done? And as Pratik just said, it's not which twenty; it's when the next. Okay, so how do we? Oh, do you have, do you want to go through all the other things? No, no, no. no. So, so 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 to 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 kind of to kind of um, to to combat that assumption what you're really going to have to do in the situation that you described, which is you have 11 things in progress, this 20 thing feature is coming up. What you, the best case you can do just for this one assumption is to say, when will 31 things be done? Because that 11 plus 20 now ends up, okay, if we get these 11 out of the system and then those 20 out of the system, next 31 things give us an idea of when this feature might be delivered. Yeah. And of course, that's fraught with all kinds of problems, too, because that we're, there's again, there's no guarantee. I know where we're I, can you say beating a dead horse anymore? I don't know uh, if you're allowed to say that or not. Apologies to the ASPCA. Um, there's no guarantee that that 31st item is going to be the 20th Enough. item yeah. of this of this new feature. It might be one of those things you still had in progress when, when mm -hmm. you started. You don't know. It might be something completely different. You don't. You don't know that. Um, okay, so what's what's another thing that we can do? I mean, I'm, um, if, if you want to go, I've, I've got one. But if you want to go, um, another thing that 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 uh, most teams, I want to say suffer with, but this I shouldn't say suffer with, is uh, uh, is is that not all of their work is usually focused on on just feature work. There is there are maintenance tasks being thrown at them. There are defects they're fixing. There is a lot of extra other things that are coming in. So there's a possibility that only I don't know, 80% of your work is going towards feature work. So saying that the next 31 things when only 70% or 80% of your work goes towards feature work are all going to be these feature things is another big assumption that we might need to overcome. But Pratik, so in that case, if I know that 80% of, or let's say 70%, let's make the math mm -hmm. maybe a little bit harder. 70% um, of, of the things that I do are feature work. 30% of the things I do are non-feature work, whatever that other stuff is. Well, couldn't I go, one, one thing I, I could do, couldn't I, is to go and filter my historical throughput so I'm only feeding in the throughput for my feature work. So go go in, instead of filtering in the into the Monte Carlo simulation all my historical throughput, go in and say, you know, what? we're only going to filter out um, the, the the bits that count toward our feature work and feed that into the Monte Carlo station, si simulation. Would that work? It it'll be better than assuming all thirty one will be feature, but it'll be worse than making some other assumptions because um, your system is still a single system that's producing different kinds of things out of it. And filtering it that way might give you a very different distribution of throughput from the past than what your real throughput can be. And it, it at best will be similar to what you are expecting, but usually would be just very skewed um, because of just the nature uh, of, of, of your system. You're, you're producing throughput, which combines all those, separating it out. Nah. Yeah, we, we have to go back to, to the fundamental assumption of, of Monte Carlo simulation that uh, the future that you're you're trying to predict roughly looks like the past that you have data for. So if you're if you're in this situation where it's like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna filter out all the non-feature stuff, and that's the throughput we're gonna use. That that is a valid approach. You you absolutely can do that. 
But the big, big, big assumption that you're making, as Pratik just said, the big assumption you're making is that if in the past, 70% of your throughput was feature work, you're assuming that in the future, 70% of your throughput is going to be feature work. If that distribution changes to become you know, 60% or 50% or even 80% or 90%, then your forecast is going to be, I mean, it, it is it's just going to be off. So it adds, uh, wh while it potentially solves the problem, it adds another layer of complexity that you have to, now you have to pay attention to what is the mix of items that we're working on because if that mix drifts too far from what we, you know, what that what the mix was in the past, the uh, the forecast immediately becomes invalid. Yep. Um, do we want, do we want to say any more bad stuff, or do we want to talk about the the real way that we we should uh, um, we should handle this problem? I, I wanted to bring up one more thing that go for it. One one more bad thing, which which uh, I believe ninety five percent of teams are guilty of which is we almost never work on only one feature at a time. And we're working on multiple features at a time. So just saying that this one feature, which is 20 stories and these 11 stories that we already have in progress and now we have 31 is not good enough because half of your throughput is probably going to some other feature. Yeah. Uh, again, you've built in that assumption that once you're finished with those 11 stories, the only stuff you're going to work on, the only mm -hmm. things you're going to work on are these next 20 from, from this new feature, which is a, a very, very dangerous assumption. Okay, so Pratik, we've, we've kept people in suspense long enough. What is the answer? How how, how do we forecast a, a brand new feature that, that drops in our lap? How do we forecast that? Um, We're going to... What we will always, always drive you towards is, is our old friend continuous forecasting. Um, we do take these into, into, into account and say, we've got 11, we've got 20. It looks like we're only going to focus on this stuff 70% of the time. So let's let's actually say our, we, can, we could potentially scale our throughput to 70% and only use that and get that first guess. But as time goes on, as we are finishing things, as we are picking up things from this feature, we need to continuously keep forecasting over and over again, because that really the way we answer this question is our first guess and then our second guess, third guess, as things keep moving on, reforecast over and over again, take all these assumptions into play and say, this is the amount of work we need to do in order to get to this mark. And potentially, yeah, scale our throughput by, by a certain percentage if we need to. I, see, I was expecting you to go a completely different route with, with the answer. Um, because what if what if we what if we have certain facts? Like what what if we know for sure how many features we're working on? What if we know yeah. for sure um uh you know um our, our, our throughput based on on, on those features and, and and things like that. So what if what we if know we all have, that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's, let, let's, let's, that. let's assume we're limiting. Let's assume we're limiting work in progress at the feature level. Let's let's assume that we're not pulling in. We're not randomly starting new features until other features are completed. Let's let's assume that we're not doing that. This uh, this is where this is where our Monte Carlo simulation becomes a little more complex. But it really isn't more complex once you understand how it works. Um, if we know how much we are limiting WIP at the feature level, um, what we can do is do Monte Carlo just the way we do it already, but which is randomly sampling throughput, but then assign throughput to the different features as we move forward. Say, today's throughput, I randomly sample two stories. And my feature whip is two, um, possibly both stories go to feature one or both stories go to feature two or one goes to feature one, one goes to feature two. And we do that over and over again. We sample and distribute throughput over and over again and figure out what dates do these features finish in every simulation. And that gives us an idea of where, um, of what commitment we can make for each of these features. If anybody wants a, a much deeper 
discussion on that particular topic right there. There is a previous episode that we did on Drunk Agile. I'm not, I don't know the name, but it was about feature forecasting. I think it was called Feature Monte Carlo and it was like, Episode eight or nine, like yeah, was, way well, yeah, in the back. One of the very first ones we do. Again, yeah. we will do our best to try and look up that episode and link it in in the description here. Um, but feel free to go back and look through our back catalog of of, of drunk agile yeah. videos because we spend a whole a whole episode talking about that um, specific case right there. Um, any, anything else we should we should talk about with regards with regard to? Um. I, I think I, I want to go back and kind of reissue the warning you initially issued, which was just because someone asks you, when will a feature of 20 stories be done, doesn't mean you just put 20 into Monte Carlo and give a date. There are existing things you're working on. There are other things that might come in. Um, that feature itself might grow or shrink. There are lots of things that could happen. And simply doing that is 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 not what Monte Carlo is trying to do. Monte Carlo is trying to tell you when the next 20 things will be done, not when particular 20 things will be done. Yeah. Monte Carlo simulation is um, is a powerful, I might argue, the most powerful forecasting tool that we have at our disposal right now. Um, but like like any tool, you know, in the wrong hands used inappropriately, it, it potentially can do much, much more damage than good. Uh, you know, you, you really need to know what 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 your assumptions are baked into that um, into that model once you run that right, run that simulation. And hopefully, we've done a decent decent enough job of explaining some of those pitfalls that you need to look out for in terms of when you're setting up your simulation. What assumptions are you really baking in? You know, um, as those forecasts get, uh -huh. get churned out. Um, any any final word for our viewers? Yeah, just um, Monica was trying to cover a bunch of assumptions for you, but there are some that you need to account for yourself. So it's not it's not the magic eight ball. <laughs> there you have it. It's not the magic eight ball. Um, as always, I mean, has this episode made sense? You know, as <laughs> you know, as we drink more, of course, everything that we say makes sense. <laughs> Leave leave us a comment. Um, please ask some some follow up questions. You know, do you know how? What other pitfalls have you run into when you are using Monte Carlo simulation? As always, we'd love to hear from you, and and we'd love to keep the conversation going, not only in the in the comments section, but also in future videos as as your questions come in. So, um, Nisha's had enough. I mean, the the, the Nisha Nisha timer is going off. Yeah, uh, so we, we we need to honor that. Uh, so for the star of the show, Nisha, thank you for coming, Nisha, for Pratik Singh. My name is Daniel Vacanti. Thank you so much for watching this, and we will see you in the next episode. Good night, everyone. Yeah.